This is a distraction from what? From the escape. The Maharaj has been kidnapped. And all of you are suspects. Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2023 Netflix comedy sequel, Murder Mystery 2. The film is directed by Jeremy Garlick and it stars, of course, Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston and Mark Strong. Now the film focuses on married couple Nick and Audrey, who, after the first film, they want to make it as a detective agency. They want to be private investigators, but they're failing pretty badly at it. And then out of the blue, they are given a call by their good friend from the first film, I think, uh, Mara, the Marawa, Marahaja, I can't even say it, who's filthy rich, is getting married, and he invites them over for an all-expenses-paid trip so that they can experience the wedding. And whilst there, he is kidnapped. The Marahaja is kidnapped, and so then as someone's killed, murdered. The whole mystery unfolds, and it is up to... Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston to try and solve this mystery. But as per usual, they keep essentially making things worse and kind of stumbling onto clues uh, in the hope that they can figure it all out. Right. What are my thoughts on Murder Mystery 2? Well, I, I remember watching, and I'm, I'm fairly sure I have reviewed the first Murder Mystery on this channel. Uh, I remember watching it on Netflix. Um, it, it was warmly received i suppose it certainly wasn't lambasted by a lot of critics um like many adam sandler films sort of thing it was risk-free fairly entertaining stuff and that really is what you could say about this it's rinse and repeat it's risk free risk-free fairly entertaining stuff that you're getting here um there's no surprises here and to say that this film is a murder mystery or supposed to be there's very little mystery because you'll figure out fairly quickly or you'll certainly have a fairly good idea of who's involved and all that kind of stuff it's but that's not really the point it's not trying to be you know knives out or glass onion this you know what i mean like a clever murder mystery for us all to kind of sherlock holmes it and or poirot it and figure it out because Sherlock Holmes and Poirot, these two characters, are not Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Part of the fun of this film is the fact that they're fairly inept, really. But they kind of stumble their way through the film. They're almost like, you know, Inspector Clouseau in their way through the film. And that's part of the comedy and the charm of the film, if you like. How they just kind of get through scenarios and situations by the skin of their teeth, not by any skill on their part. So it's... It's fairly generic stuff, it's fairly run-of-the-mill, tick-by-numbers type of stuff that we're getting here. But I think there are a few things that make this film kind of, certainly watchable and stand out really to some people. Number one is the great, great chemistry, I think, between Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. Um, I think it's their third film together now, and there is undeniably, uh, you know... A huge amount of chemistry there and they're a joy to watch they are easily the best thing in this film uh, the banter between them um you know the the jokes the fun all that kind of stuff you can see that they've really really had a good time making this film and that projects to an audience member you can tell do you know what i mean and sometimes that can help you forgive a lot because you know you, they're enjoying it so therefore for the most part you're enjoying it and and for the most part i was enjoying what i was watching here this wouldn't crack Adam Sandler's top 10 best films, not by a long shot. But it's fairly safe, entertaining, fair. And there are um, moments in this film. There's a great chase scene in a van um, that I thought was actually really well done. It was, it was fun. It was inventive. It was action-packed. Um, I, I just thought it was really good how they kind of stumbled their way through this, you know, this van scene, this chase scene in the van. I thought it were excellent. Um, the locations as well were very, very beautiful. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it looks like it's had a big budget thrown at this. You know what I mean? A, like a lavish dance scene at the beginning, you know. Um, it looks beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Very highly polished. And many of the same characters that we saw in the first film 
you do see a lot of them return here in the second film. Now, the problem with that is um, I didn't remember many of them, which says a lot about the first film. It was fairly forgettable, clearly. I remember the, I had the idea of the first film, and I remember Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler in the first film. But that's about it, really. I don't remember an awful lot more about it. And I suspect it'll be the same with this. If they decide to make another one, by the time I get to watch Murder Mystery Part 3, I'll probably have forgotten Murder Mystery 2, but just remember the concept of it are very, you know, small details, but I won't remember many of the characters, probably, if they do make um, another return um, to the third one. So, if you're looking for something fairly fun and disposable to watch this weekend, something that's not going to offend you, but at the same time, you know what I mean? Is you're gonna sit down, chill out, and watch with the wife? Because that's what I did last night. I sat down, chilled out, and watched this with my wife. We both are quite big fans of Adam Sandler. Every time he's got something new out, certainly on Netflix, we do kind of put some time aside to watch it. We don't always enjoy all of them tremendously, but some of them we do. Um, so yeah, because we've both got fond memories of going to the cinema to see Adam Sandler films like Zohan and Anger Management and things like that years ago. So, yeah, <laughs> basically, are you an Adam Sandler fan? Is this film that you is this a film you've been looking forward to checking out? Check it out. I think you'll probably feel exactly the same about this one as you did about the first one. They are definitely um very, very similar films. I just think maybe it could have been a little bit more creative with some of the other characters in this film. And what I mean is that it, there's a, there's quite a few characters in this film, but they're all they're either stereotyped, or they're just not memorable, or they're just not funny. Some of the stuff they say and do is just not particularly funny. The only one, the only good addition this time round is um, I'm trying to find who it is. Yeah, um, Enrique Arch, who plays Francisco, who's like an ex professional footballer, soccer player. If you're in America who's a real womanizer and he's the only the only trick he's got in his in his book is he can headbutt people so that they'll never blink again i thought he was quite an amusing addition but pretty much everybody else no not really and you've got to stop casting mark as much as i like mark strong you've got to stop casting him the way he's cast in this film because it, it it's just he's getting pigeonholed as that character now and i think he can do better because i like mark strong i think he's a good actor but he's pigeonholing himself to these two particular characters and it's not like it's going to help his career so yeah for me you know it's a solid seven out of ten you know there's some people that watch this and if you're not a fan of adam sandler you'll be like this is not very good um but there's others will watch this and think it's actually quite charming and a fairly easy watch um and it is in my opinion certainly so Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll be back with more content on the channel very, very soon.